Hey guys, it's Wasim from Curious Doc. A lot of our modern technology gets inspiration from nature. The bullet trains in Japan were modeled after the beak of a kingfisher bird. The arrangement of leaves on a plant have been used to improve solar panel efficiency. Higher treads have been inspired by the toe pads of tree frogs. And the hooks and loops of Velcro were inspired by these thorny seeds attaching to woolen clothes. This concept is called biomimicry and is a great way of making new innovative technologies, especially in the healthcare space. In a way, nature has done all the hard work by making a prototype and testing it over and over again through millions of years of evolution. And so a lot of medtech and biotech startups have started to harness the power of biomimicry to ultimately save lives. The first of the biomimicry startups we'll talk about is Sharklet. In 2002, the US Navy commissioned research to find ways of preventing algae and sea life from clinging to the hulls of submarines and ships. One of the scientists, Dr. Anthony Brennan, asked himself which slow-moving fish don't have sea life clinging to them. The only one he could think of was the shark. So he looked at shark skin under an electron microscope and found this unique diamond pattern made by tiny riblets. He tested this pattern on ships and found it worked extremely well at preventing algae growth. But not only algae, it prevented bacteria from clinging on too. This is because bacteria tend to form clumps together on surfaces with a sticky glue called biofilm. It's like if you're trying to glue a piece of paper to a smooth wall versus tree bark. It's much harder for the glue to stick onto the rough surface of tree bark. So in a similar way, bacteria wouldn't be able to stick onto shark skin and would just slide off and die. Sharklet's trying to implement this shark skin technology in hospitals in high touch areas like door handles or in invasive devices like intravenous cannulas. Greenbone Ortho is another fascinating biotech startup that's using trees to replace bone in patients where there's bone loss. There's actually a lot of scenarios where someone might be missing a chunk of bone. For example, if you had a huge fracture that didn't heal, or if you had a bone infection or cancer that needed to be cut out. In these cases, there's only a few ways to replace the missing bone. You can do things like using synthetic materials, grafting bone from other areas of the body, or grafting bones from deceased donors. However, all these things come with their own disadvantages, so the founders of Greenbone found a really innovative solution to this. They found that rattan, a bamboo-like plant, had an internal structure that was very similar to human bone. They simply treat the wood with chemicals to get rid of the plant cells from the wood, so that it doesn't trigger an immune response from the body. This leaves behind a white calcium phosphate scaffold without any plant cells in it. When this rattan scaffold is implanted in the place of human bone, our own bone cells will naturally start to grow inside the scaffold and replace the scaffold material with bone. Over time, the entire rattan scaffold is replaced and natural bone architecture is restored. The thing that makes rattan so unique is that it has a micro and macro structure that is remarkably similar to native bone. At the macro scale, it has compact wood on the outside and a hollow cavity on the inside just like normal bone. At a micro scale, the xylem channels which transport water from the roots to the rest of the plant mimic the blood vessels in natural human bone. Also, the fact that the rattan scaffold is porous and has a lot of holes like a sponge has a huge advantage in its function. What happens is our bone cells and blood vessels actually have space to grow into the scaffold through those little holes instead of just hitting a brick wall. This is called osteoconduction, when cells can actually grow into the scaffold. There's a lot more promising technologies that are still in development and yet to be commercialized, like painless needles inspired by mosquitoes. But you know, it's amazing to think what we can gain from just observing nature and then applying that to technologies across multiple disciplines. Suddenly the work of a marine biologist studying sharks can help a hospital control infections. Or in the case of bullet trains in Japan, how a bird watcher observing kingfishers can influence the design of one of the fastest trains humans have made. It just goes to show that there's still a lot we can learn from the natural world around us. If you found this video interesting, consider subscribing with notifications. And if you have any questions for me, leave a comment below. Cheers.